Hello everyone, this is Madhvi Mehta from Putak Securities Commodity Research Team and I'll be discussing the outlook for major non-agriculture commodities. Well, commodities ended largely lower last week and industrial metals were the worst performers as growth concerns dented demand expectations. While commodities ended lower, equities and bonds managed to gain and the US dollar index ended a choppy week with modest losses. The gains in equities and bonds show that bargain buyers are looking for good opportunities. The losses in commodities show that market players expect efforts to bring inflation under control to materialize and demand to cool down. US DJI index ended higher for the first time in four weeks, recovering from December 2020 lows set a week ago. Chinese equities ended with modest gains, marking its fourth weekly rise. The US dollar index noted mixed trade but ended lower, retreating further from 2002 highs set earlier this month. In last few weeks, market players shunned riskier assets and chose the safety of the US dollar. The US currency, however, seems to have lost momentum as market players counter Fed's monetary tightening stance against increasing concerns of a, increasing concerns about health of the US economy. It was a quiet week event-wise, however, volatility was high and it is unlikely to subside soon as concerns about aggressive monetary tightening are now coupled with concerns about health of US and global economy. The biggest event for the week was Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's testimony. Fed raised interest rate by a steep 75 basis point earlier this month and market players wanted more clarity about how long the central bank will continue to tighten and what will be its implication on the economy. As expected, the US central bank head maintained that the current priority is to get inflation under control. Fed chief also acknowledged that recession is possible and called a soft landing very challenging. A number of other Fed officials also highlighted the need to continue with monetary tightening as well as possibility of a recession. Comments from Fed officials indicate that the current focus is to get inflation under control and the central bank may not alter its monetary policy stance unless there are clear signs of easing price pressure. While the central bank is not worried about growth currently, signs of severe stress in the economy may force the central bank to readjust its stance. Along with central bank officials, a large number of industry players have also indicated possibility of a recession. President Biden and US Treasury Secretary, however, maintained an optimistic stance and stated that a recession was not inevitable. Uh, St. Louis Fed Pre President James Bullard also said that worries over a US recession are overblown. Amid increasing talks about recession, growth and thereby demand concerns rose also on spate of disappointing economic data. Manufacturing PMI data from US, Eurozone, UK and Japan highlighted that activity has slowed more than expectation. US, UK and Eurozone consumer sentiment data also showed increasing concerns about health of the economy. US consumer sentiment slipped to the lowest level on record level. Inflation data also highlighted higher price pressure and the need to take immediate measures. UK consumer prices rose last month at the fastest pace in 40 years. Correction in crude oil and commodity prices, however, eased inflation concerns to some extent. US consumer sentiment data also showed some improvement in inflation expectations. China was also in focus amid continued worries that economic recovery may be challenged unless virus spread is brought under control. Virus cases in China have dropped significantly. However, market players still fear that some restrictions may remain in place. Meanwhile, government has continued with efforts to boost economy, but market players remain skeptical that the growth targets will be achieved. Russia-Ukraine concerns also continue to linger. However, we saw little market reaction to it. The war has entered, it, uh, entered the fifth month and there are little signs of a resolution yet. Tensions rose as Ukraine on Saturday said Russia was aiming to drag its ally Belarus into the war. After reporting that missiles which struck a border region near Kyiv came from the Belarusian territory. Global financial markets were rattled in last few weeks on tightening concerns and now volatility has intensified amid increasing possibility of a recession. We may continue to see volatility as market players react to economic numbers as well as central bank comments to gauge how much the economy will be affected by monetary tightening. Key data this week includes US GDP growth estimate, Consumer, uh, consumer confidence, manufacturing and services PMI from China, US and Europe, and Eurozone CPI reading. Forecasts indicate that US economic data may point towards lower economic activity. If data matches market expectation, it may add to growth worries. Chinese manufacturing and services PMI, PMI is also expected to remain below 50 level, 
showing contraction in the sectors. Eurozone inflation data is expected to show further rise in inflation pressure. A number of central bank officials including Fed Chair, Chairman Jerome Powell, ECB President and BOE Governor are due to speak this week. But they will largely likely to maintain they are largely likely to maintain hawkish stance amid rising price pressure. Also in focus will be China's virus situation as well as development relating to Russia Ukraine war. Let us now start with individual commodities and we'll start with gold first. Comics gold traded in a narrow range and ended mod- modestly lower, marking its second weekly decline. Gold weakened amid increasing emphasis on monetary tightening to get inflation under control. Weakness in commodities at large, recovery in equity markets and ETF outflows also weighed on gold prices. Global growth worries, however, kept a flow to prices. Gold may continue to witness volatile trade as support from growth concerns are countered by tightening expectations. However, with Fed's emphasis on continuing with aggressive moves, the general bias may be on the downside. The trading range we see for the week is 49,500 to 51,800. Moving to silver, COMEX silver fell sharply last week and tested the lowest level in six weeks. Amid con- uh, silver fell amid concurrent losses in gold and industrial metals, monetary tightening by major central banks and global growth concerns weighed on silver prices. ETF activity was mixed, however, net outflows show weaker investor interest. Silver has fallen sharply on back of losses in gold and industrial metals, and any stability. However, any stability in either of these sectors may lead to some short covering in the metal. Hence, we recommend waiting for corrective rebound to create fresh shorts. The trading range we see for the week is 58,200 to 63,200. Moving to industrial metals, let's start with copper first. LME copper prices slipped to 15 month low as increasing probability of a US recession coupled with lingering COVID concerns in China weighed heavily on the demand outlook. Supply concerns also eased as Codelco's management uh, reached an agreement with union leaders that will end protest at the company's copper mines in Chile. Going ahead, copper may remain under pressure as investors cautiously wait for final manufacturing PMI reading from major economies. Also in focus will be US PCA index, which is Fed's preferred inflation gauge as it will affect the inflation as as it will affect the inflation expectation. Comments from central bank officials will also be closely watched. The trading range we see for the week is 678 to 738. Next, let's talk about aluminium. Aluminium prices remained below 2500 level as controlled coal prices in China, coupled with macroeconomic concerns, weighed on the light metal. China's National Development and Reform Commission said it is closely monitoring the price caps it imposed at the start of May to help generators ensure adequate electricity supply. China has already decided to increase domestic coal output and reduce import tariffs in order to ensure energy security amid rising global prices. Going ahead, aluminium may continue to trade under pressure as increasing supply and and exports signal weaker Chinese demand. However, LME stocks have continued to decline and are near 21-year lows. The trading range we see for the week is 202 to 221. Moving to zinc, zinc prices weakened further last week amid demand concerns. However, there are signs of tightness in the market. LME cash to three months spread uh, saw the steepest backwardation since 1997 as LME cancel warrants or stocks earmarked for delivery jumped above 64,000 tons and now stand at over 80% of total inventories. Going ahead, zinc prices may see limited downside as Chinese production is expected to decline in June due to heavy rainfall in certain regions. Output is forecasted to be lower in coming 2-3 months as some smelters in the north are scheduled to carry out routine maintenance. The latest study group report also noted that the global market was in a deficit of 13,000 tons in the Jan-April period. The trading range we see for the week is 281 to 323. Lastly, let's talk about lead. Lead prices fell to 7-month lows on back of demand concerns. However, the supply of both primary and secondary lead has declined in China. The latest study group report showed that global market was in a 20,000 ton surplus in the Jan-April period. Lead may trade with a downward bias, however, price may remain supported by decline in Chinese stocks while lead output is hit by suspension in certain areas. Shanghai lead inventories tumbled by 13% last week while social inventories of lead ingots across major centers fell by 10%. 
the trading range we see for the week is 168 to 185. Moving to energy complex, let's start with crude oil first. NYMEX crude slumped to near 6 week low but witnessed a sharp rebound late in the week to end with a modest decline. Crude fell sharply in last few days as global growth worries dented demand outlook while US increased efforts to bring fuel prices under control. Crude oil however witnessed a sharp rebound late in the week amid recovery in US equity market and as US government failed to take any concrete measures to bring prices under control. Concerns about Russian supply and lack of any easy replacement also kept a flow to crude prices. Going ahead, crude may remain volatile as demand concerns counter supply risks. However, overall bias may be on the downside unless risk sentiment improves significantly. The trading range we see for the week is 7800 to 9100. Lastly, let's talk about natural gas. NYMEX natural gas slumped over 10% last week, building on the 21% decline noted a week ago and has tested the lowest level since early April. The biggest factor weighing on gas prices is closure of the Freeport's LNG terminal in Texas for three months, which will divert more supply towards domestic US market. Also weighing on prices sell off across commodities and increasing concerns about health of US economy. Firmness in European gas prices amid reduced supply from Russia and robust weather related demand in US has however lent some support to prices. Natural gas is setting fresh lows which indicates downbeat sentiment. However, the sell-off seems little overstretched and one must wait for higher le levels to create fresh short positions. The trading range we see for the week is 440 to 548. Well, that's it from my end. I wish you all a very happy trading week. Thank you.